How does what we chase after in this life reveal what we value? Well, one of the most priceless commodities we are given with each new day is our time. When the clock strikes midnight, we all have the same 86,400 seconds for a new day. How we spend those moments and how the hours are used will give us a good look into what we value. I value sleep, so out of those 86,400 seconds, I hope to spend at least eight hours asleep. As you go through your day, consider all the ways you spend your time. You spend time at work, time with family, time eating, time on your phone, time exercising, time furthering your education, time shopping or spending it with entertainment through podcasts, TV shows, and movies, or time with God, time with friends, and you begin to see how the rest of your time is allocated. Once the moments are gone, they're gone. So in a typical day, what do we chase after the most? Where is the majority of our time spent? And does that reveal what we value? We could also look at our bank accounts. How we spend our money is a great way to reveal in ways what we may be chasing and therefore what we value. Once again, food is high on the list. <laughs> Housing costs, cell phone bills, cable, entertainment, Wi-Fi, clothing, hair care, skin care, nail care, and so much more. What about investments or charitable giving? Is tithing in there? God says it should be. I'm sure there's a coffee line item. What we value is revealed in many ways by how we spend our money. What are we chasing? Here's what I want you to consider today. As you maybe look at how you spend the precious moments of each new day or how you spend the financial blessings God has provided to you, what does it reveal? In the Old Testament, King Solomon considered all he acquired, chased, pursued, and purchased. As a result, it revealed what he valued. Ecclesiastes 2.4 I undertook great projects. I built houses for myself and planted vineyards. I made gardens and parks and planted all kinds of fruit trees in them. I made reservoirs to water groves of flourishing trees. I bought male and female slaves and had other slaves who were born in my house. I also owned more herds and flocks than anyone in Jerusalem before me. I amassed silver and gold for myself and the treasure of kings and provinces. I acquired male and female singers and a harem as well, the delights of a man's heart. I became greater by far than anyone in Jerusalem before me. In all this, my wisdom stayed with me. I denied myself nothing my eyes desired. I refused my heart no pleasure. My heart took delight in all my labor, and this was the reward for all my toil. Yet when I surveyed all that my hands had done and what I had toiled to achieve, everything was meaningless, a chasing after the wind. Nothing was gained under the sun. All of it was meaningless. What was it ultimately that King Solomon valued? Self. It was all about Solomon. He denied himself nothing, turned his back on God's way, and in doing so, in his efforts to chase after the wind as he describes his pursuits, he gained nothing but heartache and a bitter and fractured monarchy. Maybe it's time to take an inventory like Solomon. What are you chasing? God is a giver of good gifts, but those gifts were never meant to replace God. In Him, everything falls into its right place when we seek first His kingdom over building our own. That's the truth. When we value the things of God, His word, His will, His way, only then are we fully satisfied. I'm Lori Klein.